welcome back to another edition of It's a Woman's World. Do you know that in life, there are so many different seasons, and in those seasons, we are required to change, to transform, to rebrand, and to be born anew? Well, this segment is about just that. How do we do that with grace and to live our best life? I am your host, Jamela Pettiford. And I want to start off by welcoming our co-host and, of course, our guest. Let's start first with Nadia Giordana. Greetings, Nadia. Hi, Jamela. It's so much fun to be here today. I can't wait to get into a great discussion with our guest, Susan. Yes, me as well. Next, we have Miss Melissa Nemango. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great, Jamila. And I'm looking forward to talking with Susan Citri, who really fascinates me. Yes, me as well. And welcome. Good to see you again. Barbara Lavalier, how are you? Welcome. I am so good. I'm happy, happy, happy to be here today. And, you know, it's it's not often we meet someone who has transformed her life several times like our guest today, Susan. So um, I've got my questions ready. I do too. I do too. Thanks, Barbara. And last but not least, Candy Pettiford, uh, our co-host. How are you? And welcome, Candy. Well, you know, here it's rainy and kind of dark, but I think the sun's going to shine when we talk to Susan. I can yes. see the sun shining right now. All right, I'm ready. <laughs> well, Susan, welcome to It's a Woman's World. I want to welcome you. We have been elated knowing that you are coming because you are the bright shining star of transformation. And so many people want to be able to do it. And you have done it with such grace. Well, Susan, who are you? Give us a, a little brief of who you are and, and and maybe where you were born and how did you get to this point right here? A little brief, would you? Wow. <laughs> you know, I've done a lot of speaking and classes, but I've never had the subject be about me. So it, it's a little intimidating, <laughs> but you all are just so much fun. I just feel like I'm at a party and yeah, I, wow. I am, uh, I think I'm 72. I keep forgetting. Um, mm. Born in the fifties, so obviously mm -hmm. born, you know, in kind of more traditional times where, you know, you just sort of might. I was told to go to college. My dad was a judge. My mom was a homemaker. You got to go to college. You got to get a teaching degree. You got to marry a professional man. Mm. You know, but and and I I didn't think that I was really out of the box until I think in college. You know, going to college during the seventies, during all the Vietnam war and the in, in beginning of feminism and all of that, I really, it really opened my eyes. And I think I didn't have a plan, but I think I just kind of rolled with it and just kind of whatever came up. So I I've had four major careers and uh, I grew up in, by the way, in Moorhead, Minnesota, such an exciting okay. place. Okay. And I currently live in Minneapolis, but um, yeah, I, I started out doing, a criminal justice planning. My degree from the University of Minnesota was in criminal justice planning and or criminal justice and sociology. And I got really good jobs doing interesting things for a woman that age. And then I did video production, had no idea what I was doing. Um, but I, you know, I make it up. I just realized I'm the kind of person who jumps into something and then figures out how to do it. <laughs> well, Susan, you, I mean, you have when I when I read about you and I was understanding who you are, you have really mastered the art of transformation. You know, and that, I think, is what's so cool. I guess the question that I have for you is that in any transformations, you have to know when to leave the last thing, when your season's kind of dried up, when it's time to transition to the next thing. Can you, can you answer for me? And then, you know, let's just jump in. Um, how did you know when it was time for you to go into that next thing? 
when did you know? And then, yeah, and then how did it yeah. happen? I think, it, like I said, I, I'm not a person who just plans things. It's opportunity. So I, I it just, it was more circumstances. Like the first job I had, um, the grant funding went out. It was during the, you know, um, Reagan years and the funding left. And so I had no job. So um, at that time I was writing grants for criminal justice programs up in the Arrowhead region. And um, they, we, we did programming for law enforcement, police, and I got to travel in the whole seven county area up there, work with police up in the Iron Range. You know, I'm 23 years old, looking like I'm 15, dealing with Iron Range police chiefs, who just looked at me like, who is this little who's girl? The, who's this, you know, yeah, who's this young girl? Who, who does she think she is telling me that we should combine, consolidate, you know, spending with the other counties? And, you know, it was really hard to... Uh, you know, I didn't grow up like just being believing I could do anything I want. So mm -hmm. it was just kind of being in the moment. And I didn't even know at the time I was in the moment. But, it, you know, I just I think just having relationships with people. And I got to do lobbying at the legislature. I got to yeah. travel. I got to do things I never would have believed that I, I could do. And then um, I got a job with the Supreme Court doing programming throughout the state. And that was the beginning of like all of the victim witness programs that the um, domestic violence programs and things like that. So we went around the state doing programming for courts, corrections, judges, law enforcement, mm -hmm. on consolidating services, supporting, you know, really victims of domest domestic violence. And we had a program with the Illusion Theater to do that. So not only have you went through transformations, you bring others. Yeah, I, I think that... I've, I've had this thing in me my whole life. I don't know. Nice. Just always have to do whatever I can. Like, I have to change the world. Yes, I yes. always have that. I, and Melissa yeah, has I a question. I, I know Melissa this. got something she wants to say to that, too. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. I, 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 I really I admired. Uh, yeah. I've worked with domestic violence um, victims before, and that really attracted me to your story. But part of what I wanted to ask has been answered in the past question. It was mainly what really motivates you to move on to the next step. Is it need of a job? Is it that you know how to do this particular thing? Or is it that this particular service is necessary and I think I can do it? So that's- Yeah, I, I, just... I don't know. I mean, you know, because then the funding ran out on all of those. I, by this time I had a child, I was pregnant, I had no job. So one of my colleagues and I that I used to work with decided we would get into video production. This mm. was in the early 80s when cameras were becoming portable and we bought one. We had no idea what we were doing, and but we just made it up, you know. And I remember, I don't know if you, if those of you in Minneapolis remember when the uh, Northwest Bank fire, uh, there was a big fire downtown Minneapolis in the bank. Well, for some reason, somebody hired us to go in and you and like uh, do inventory on the on the bank, like all after the fire. So, you know, it was wet and dark and cold. And we had people with lights and we were going through this camera inventorying different things uh, throughout, like all the stories. And, you know, what an interesting experience. I mean, that was just one. And we did weddings and we did all kinds of things. When I was setting up lighting with with Beverly yesterday, it kind of brought back those memories of you know, like doing a wedding and all of a sudden they put a plant right in front of the camera, right mm. when the wedding started or the audio wouldn't work or, you know, all of the things like that. And then I went to work for <coughs> the State Bar Association and I did their video recording. I worked um, for their continuing ed for lawyers. And then I also worked with the Unitarian Church in St. Paul and did mm. cable broadcasting and children's programming on grants. And so that was kind of career number two. And then, you know, again, the funding, the circumstances changed. By this time, I had a second child. And um, and I, my husband was decided to leave the marriage, which was a very much of a surprise for me. And I'd had this thing in the back of my head that and my ideas come to me in the shower. I don't know why, but I should become a chiropractor and I should go to chiropractic school. You know, I'd only been to a chiropractor once in my life. I don't even know where that came from. Mm. But I started pursuing it, looking into it. And I found out I had to do a lot of science and math, which I had totally avoided in college. 
And my husband was leaving and I had a new baby. So I'm like, how can I do this? You know, mm -hmm. but somehow the, I, I'm a resilient person and I figured it out. And so I went back to school for two years, did all the sciences. You know, I mean, literally, I remember going into my physics professor and saying, you know, I didn't understand like all the analogies at that time were, or football analogies or car analogies or, you know, I, I, think, I said, if you could talk about the trajectory of a baby throwing something off a high chair, I can get that, you know, I mean, that makes sense to me. But I mean, it really, in all this time, the inequities for women always shown, kind of were, were shining through for me. I mean, I always felt like I had to be an advocate as a feminist. I think that's the core of who I am. And somehow, you know, I got through school, got accepted in the chiropractic school at Northwestern here in Bloomington. And at age 38 with a single mom with two kids, I went back to a very, you know, mm. difficult schooling. How I did mm -hmm. that, I don't know. I had one so child with, it, you know. Mm -hmm. It sounds, yeah. it sounds, Susan, <laughs> like um, everything has connected to the next thing for you. Yeah. And yeah. you knew it was time when the resources begin to dry up and when life begin to happen in real time. Yeah. And I think what I've noticed with um, ladies like yourself who are able to look at the situation, but then also have so many different gifts and abilities and desires. It's almost as if you're being granted these opportunities to live out all of the things that are on the inside of you. I, I think you're Barbara, right. To Barbara, Barbara yeah. To that. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know it at the time, but I think you're absolutely right. I think just somehow being open to possibility and being, having the courage. And I never thought I was courage. a person with courage and a risk taker, but I really am. And then I found out I'm a real entrepreneur. I mean, those things weren't, you know, I wasn't born in the era of you can do anything you want, but somehow it came out. Mm, and that's what and I want. You know, one of the things that I wanted in my life through all my careers is to empower people, especially young women. I'm jumping in here. Jump Sorry. in, Barb. Barbara, I, uh, I knew I you were going to do it. Nadia had her hand up before me, but if Nadia wants to go, I'd like to go next. <laughs> go ahead, Barbara. <laughs> I'm, I'm a journalist. I've got so many questions. I'll I'll make it just a couple here. So you've had these four these four different careers, and I've noticed that one career was in the seventies, one in the eighties, one in the nineties, and then in the two thousands. I thought that was interesting for a start. And the last career, which to me is just such an interesting one, because you did it at the age that you did it, which you can share about that, and that's becoming a flight attendant. Wow. What oh, Barbara, has, you just took my my idea. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead. You, you can have lots more to add to that, uh, Candy, okay, your experience. Um, so what has this taught you about life, all of these different careers? What has this taught you, Susan? Keeping in mind, <sighs> there are a lot more people who have a lot more questions. Oh, yes. I don't I don't even, I mean, I just think it, it taught me to be open mm. to possibilities. And I mean, I'm such, you know, I have such an entrepreneur brain. I think I'm a little bit, definitely ADD, but things come in and every, you know, I always think, oh, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? Even though the I've had these careers, you know, I, I had a chiropractic practice in um, the St. Cloud area for 20 years and it was a functional medicine practice. So I built a building. I had at one time 20 staff. Uh, we did, you know, chiropractic, massage, acupuncture, nutritional testing, physical therapy, naturopathic. So I really had this feeling that, you know, there has to be a, a holistic approach to life. And, you know, I was a little bit ahead of my time with that, but it was, you know, that's my approach to life. And then how I got to be a flight attendant was, um, I was, my second husband, uh, Bruce was a professor at St. Cloud State. And I met him when I was in chiropractic school. And we decided to get together. And so I moved to St. Cloud and uh, started a practice there and um, ha had the practice there for, like I said, for 20 years. And he um, got throat cancer in 2010. And during this time, you know, I'm juggling going down to Mayo and running the practice and the things that we do, you know, taking care of kids. And then um, 
it, it got better and then it came back in 2015. So at that time, I decided that I needed to kind of focus on him because we knew the outcome wasn't probably going to be the best. So mm -hmm. I downsized and spent that last year of his life with him and tried to make it the best, you know, that we could. And uh, after he died, I knew I wanted to move back to Minneapolis. So I sold the house. We had a house on the river with four garage stalls. I had to get rid of all of that and move into like 1,100 square feet. And um, then I was just like, and my mom had died uh, six months after my husband. So, you know, all of a sudden I went from taking care of people, taking care of practice, taking care of my mom, my husband to having nobody. And just, I wanted to take a break and um, I didn't know what to do with myself. I, I realized how much the structure is important and I need, you know, I need to be going, going, going. And I, you know, so I kind of got a little like depressed and what do I do? And then I met a friend through a meetup group who was a flight attendant for Sun Country and she was in her fifties. And I thought, well, that would be fun. And so when there were openings, I, I applied just as a joke to see if they hired old people, you know, and they, I mean, I don't mean that derogatorily, but I, it really was a joke. I hadn't had an interview or anything for, you know, I always work for myself and they hired me. And so I was going to do it for a year and now I'm going on six. So that's a whole other story. Susan, I, <laughs> and, I, yeah. I see a lifelong learner here because it takes a whole learning, a whole new set of skills for each of these major careers. Were there, were there any of those skill sets that overlapped and you were able to use in, in other things? Or can you speak to that? Well, obviously the people skills. I mean, when I was in chiropractic school, I was, you know, I never felt I was really smart enough. I think there's a lot of imposter syndrome. Like, I, I don't know that I can do it, but somehow I had the determination. So, um, I, but I knew I would, you know, when you, the grades would be posted in, and I'd look at them, I think, oh, well, but I'm getting through, I'm doing it. And I'm doing it with two kids as a single mom, you know, but I knew I would be really good at my job just because I, I'm empathetic. I knew I could be with people. I loved to, to make a difference and help people. And I think that's translated in, you know, definitely into the, this last career and who knows, there may be another one, but uh, I'm not sure if I answered your question. I'm, I think I think that makes sense. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I have a question there because um, I was a flight attendant for about 17 years. So that's exciting, Susan, to know that they would take somebody older. <laughs> that that's that shocks me because usually yeah. I'm a young, sweet little thing. And I was 20 when I started. So yeah. that's good news to know that they take somebody older. But um, of all the places you've been, where would you say that you like the most? And of the jobs, which of, of the different jobs that you get, what you say you like the most? I, I can't even say. Um, I keep my Hawaii? car license. Hawaii? Well, Hawaii. With places to go. I love, yeah. Well, you know, we, what I have loved with my current job, with Sun Country, and we're not Delta, so we, you know, we don't go all over the world per se. It's mostly vacation. And I love it because we take people, uh, to who save their money to take their family on vacation. And I really enjoy that because, you know, we have planes full of kids, which can not always, isn't always fun. True, but true, sometimes true. I feel like a daycare mom, but, uh, but I like taking people to on vacation. And the other thing that we do that I, my favorite part of it is we do a lot of, um, we take all the soccer teams, all the, the U S soccer teams. And so, you know, I can end up in mobile Alabama or, Bennington, Washington, or Vancouver, or places we don't normally go, and then I'll have a layover there. And I love that. I love the layovers. I love the people. Yes. I love, you know, just, just going to a new place. And every time I fly, it's with new people because, you know, there's it's never the same. So it's always new people and it's always new passengers. And I, I think that's fun. I think it's a challenge. And I love after running a business for 20 years, just go get on a plane, go somewhere, come back. And that's, mm. I, don't have to, I don't have to run the company. You're right. Well, I, I, I think about, you know, what 
um, Candy just mentioned about how, you know, which one did you like? You liked them all during the seasons. I liked also what Barbara was saying is each each decade you had a new, you had a kind of a reinvention, which kind of goes to the opening of the new seasons, the way that we, mm-hmm. life is, is, is seasonal and you go through these different seasons. For the young girls who are feeling as if they are trapped, in doing this one thing that they think that they do well and they only do that well, we're finding that a lot of our young people um, are not as um, daring and have as much courage as you have had throughout all of these beautiful years that you've been blessed with. What do you say to the young women who um, walk in fear, walk in um, this unknowing of how do I have the courage to be able to be great in all of the different seasons of my life? Uh, That's really a great question. I've always had this motto, um, feel the fear and do it anyway. Mm -hmm. And I have to remind myself of that. Say it one more time. You got to say it one more time. Yeah, say that one more time. Fear. Say it a little slower. Yeah. Say it again. Feel the fear and do it anyway. Mm. And just take, or, you know, another way of saying is you can always do something for 10 minutes or whatever it takes. You know, <laughs> do the thing that scares you. And that keeps me going. You know, I mean, well, there are days that you just don't want to get up and have to do, you know, if I have I have to get up and get on a three in the morning flight, like, you know, it's hard. It's hard. But you, you just like keep you just do it. And if you have a dream, just manifest it. I, I really believe in that. I really believe in in creating, you know, putting it out to the universe or God or whoever inspires you and just going for what you believe in. Mm. Um well, I, I, I'm sure you all have done that too, because you also have yeah. illustrious oh, yes. backgrounds and careers. And one of the things that I was saying before is that, you know, well-behaved women have never changed the world, yeah. you know, and you have had so many different um, lives in this one life. Could it be that it's because you're a Minnesota girl? Hmm. <laughs> Minnesota, yay! I don't. <laughs> I have never. I don't know. I I do think that we have an attitude in, min, in Midwest that we, you just do it. You know. Do, yeah. Um. Uh. And I don't when think I was we in college. Yeah. Oh, I just just quickly when I was in college, and you know, and I didn't grow up traveling like kids do now, or my kids have done. But um, I when I after my freshman sophomore year, I got a job out. Um, in the Pocono Mountains being a camp counselor. And I learned from that that they loved hiring um, people, mostly girls, I think, from the Midwest because they're such hard workers and they can count on them. So who knows? Yes. And I think so, because one of the things I heard you say is you said, I came back to Minneapolis, you know, (laughs) Um, you know, that really resonated with me, partly because you know, a person like yourself, Susan, you know, you could live anywhere and you'd be able to do this as well, because it's just something that is in you, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And there is something different about folks who are Minnesotans and Minnesota women. I think, you know, one of the reasons why we, we have, it's a woman's world is because we really highlight those who have really received this, this exuberant culture of you can be the woman you want to be. Yeah. You know, you know what yeah. is really yeah. interesting is that um, we're because of Zoom, we're now uh, a world, our audience is worldwide. So we have women mm-hmm. from all over the world uh, mm-hmm. watching this program. And if you would just share with us briefly, because I think we might be running out of time. Um, yeah, we're getting close. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what okay. what do you think is the best practice for um, a, a person, whether it's a woman or a man, but, you know, we're talking about women here for, for aging, uh, you know, managing mm. aging. 
what what it would be your best practice tip for us? That's such a good question. I've really been dwelling in that, you know, because I feel like I still have another career to go. And <laughs> and uh, before I talked to you, I, I thought about I wanted maybe do some podcasting or, you know, do something to bring in the elements like, like traveling, changing careers older, um, tips for traveling, like how can I combine, uh, you know, my health knowledge and and with my travel knowledge and and, and help people kind of navigate those changes in life. But I, I just think it's being in the moment and just, I don't know. I mean, I feel like I, I'm slowing down a little bit. Um, and aging is a question now as I get older, I, I like the time is getting shorter. So I feel like I got to really pack it all in and do everything mm -hmm. I can, but I don't have the energy that I used to. Yeah. But yeah, it's really a question. I don't know. I think you just got to just not, not hold back. Mm -hmm. and, and But okay. I've also really feel like I've, I'm taking more time to just slow down than I used to. I don't run here, there, everywhere. I say no a lot more. And, right. you know, sometimes I feel a little shy and I have to really force myself. That's mm. why I like being a flight attendant because I have to be nice. I have to be outgoing. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, Susan, we have practice. enjoyed. Yes, it's been, it is, it's been, it's excellent practice. And we have truly enjoyed having you with us on yes. It's a Woman's World. I know that we could talk to you for hours because <laughs> your life has been so grand and so vast and so blessed that you could share with us all kinds of stories of how your journey has morphed and transformed and truly rebranded. And so community and it's a woman's world. We are a community of women who are powerful and great and who are not afraid to step out and transform. And so we hope today, as you are a part of our community, that you felt inspired just as we all did and are by Susan's story. We hope that you as a powerful member of It's a Woman's World community will Find your rebranding transformation and be a part of this new beginning that each season brings. Where are you in life? Well, we'll see you again. And we know that you, being a part of our community, will join us on It's a Woman's World. Thank you.